Welcome to an intro of Zixi Software Defined Video Platform. I believe there's a chat window here on the side, so feel free to ping us with any questions um, pertaining to your live and live video use cases or any questions about um, how Zixi's been being, how Zixi has been helping major broadcast customers move content um, globally and that at scale. So from a quick introduction perspective, uh, my name is Eunice Park. I am the Vice President of Zixi's Global Sales and Revenue Team, and I'm here webcasting from New York City. I'd also like to introduce you guys to what I call Zixi's Best Kept Secrets, our, our solutions engineers. And we have Chris Fellows, our senior SC uh, based in UK, who will be presenting the Zen Master demo. And Leanne Gann, she's our lead APJ solutions engineers um, based in Singapore, Malaysia. So let's go ahead and get started. Who is Zixi? Um, I think for those who are on this call today, most of you guys are, uh, are familiar with Zixi as what I call in the little Z, Z as in Zixi protocol. And we made a name for ourselves initially early on in the market of creating a proprietary protocol that really outshone, um, uh, outshone ourselves and basically allowed customers to move content, move broadcast quality, um, over the over intern, over the open internet. Um, since then, we've really pivoted ourselves, um, given our 13 plus years in the market and really hardening our platform. And we've recently launched what we call our software defined video platform. And this specific webinar, this specific uh, overview is specifically pertaining to how we've evolved into our software defined video platform and the need um, and how we will help um, um, launch your channels at scale. So Zixi has a software defined video platform. Who are we? What are we now? So we, like I said, we're war global leaders, world leaders in bringing broadcast quality transmission over not only the unmanaged internet, um, but also the managed internet, private networks, um, MPLFs. Uh, we've been in the market, like I said, for 13 years, and we have a long set of experience that yielded a super hardened platform. And at the end of the day, what we do is we're able to use our software to source, manage, distribute live linear, live events. Um, we give our customers the ability to manage and monitor these channels through various components of our platform, whether it's from the protocol level, whether it's from the solution stack, um, through our huge ecosystem of various partners, which we'll showcase in just a second, through various service providers, content owners, OTT providers, solution partners, all ultimately controlled by what we called a unified SaaS control plane for our Zixi enabled network. Um, this is specifically what we kind of view as a very critical component. Um, being able to manage live linear and live channels is very difficult to do, especially when in our industry, we know table stakes are super high to manage and orchestrate this all across different environments in different forms, whether content is coming from various edge devices, whether it's going into multi-cloud scenarios or um, to different locations you're planning to push the content out of and go into, whether it's from traditional media service operators, um, as well as OTT and new platforms that we keep on seeing. Um, at the end of the day, this is uh, also helping our operators and our non-engineering resources to be able to orchestrate and manage all these software elements across this entire ecosystem that our customers, um, that you, your, your, your content is touching and how in conjunction it's working with the Zixi protocol and all the other protocols and elements that feeds in and out of that entire ecosystem. So we've been doing this for a long time. Um, as we all understand, uh, there's been major changes, major tectonic plates uh, plate shifting in our industry, not only in North America, but in Europe. And also we're starting to see um, things happen in APG region as well. I think the most obvious ones that we've listed here is uh, consumers are migrating, right? Consumers are migrating from traditional way of uh, viewing television to OTT direct to consumer applications. I mean, I think this is probably, I mean, you see this more, this adoption probably at a higher growth rate early, even more early on in APJ than North American consumers. Um, the cord cutting, the pressures to get to, the pressures of um, getting content um, from a quicker time to market perspective. You see high production values, you see um, lower costs um, that's constantly uh, driving 
um, the bottom line, it's super relentless. You see mega mergers, reorganizations happening. Um, at least in North America, we see Viacom CBS mergers happening. Um, we saw AT&T Warner Media, the consolidation of as it was launching HBO Max, Peacock direct to consumer application that was launched all underneath the house of um, NBCU with the parent company of um, Comcast. So all these things are emerging as we see. Um, and as a result of that, the cost pressures are um, really, really um, tremendous in terms of accelerating the need to um, optimize and create efficiency around. So migrating to the cloud and being able to virtualize, right? Um, CapEx to OpEx transitions. So all these things, um, we have a dynamic environment in our ent entire um, industry and how we change and how we create distribution and consume uh, and how we consume live media. Um, it, it's really pushing us to think better how to be more creative, how to be uh, more effective and optimize and be efficient for our customers. So when we think about this different dynamic environment, we have to kind of acknowledge that live is very difficult. Uh, you have to manage audio assets, network and transport layers and manage these devices. And what's really required in order to optimize and make this happen is what we are noticing this thing called a software defined video platform. And Zixi's capabilities is really what's enhancing that and bringing the capabilities at hand. So let me just talk a little bit about what exactly, well, what is a software defined video platform? Uh, I mentioned the first thing is uh, our ability to bring content in. The very first thing that is important is it's, the, it's all about the protocols and the performance of those per protocols. Um, whether you're using Zixi, whether you're using any of the other 17 protocols that our software defined video platform, the Z capital Z Zixi platform now supports. Um, so these protocols need to be reliable. They need to be secure. Uh, we have to focus on the QoS of it as it impacts the experience downstream. And most importantly, it's all about signal path continuity and the interoperability as you're moving content into a specific platform, uh, whether it's closed or open, right? Whether it's over the open internet or whether it's private MPLS, right? Or it might be using a myriad of different types of network condition, uh, network types. So for us, we're all about the ability to um, provide a multi-protocol support under a single platform, which basically means in addition to uh, supporting Zixi protocol, which we are, Zixi is known for, um, we're also supporting different protocols such as NDI, RIST, RTP, RT, we are traditional uh, protocols, RTP, RTP, FAC, UDP, um, OTT writing protocols like your HLS, HLS dash, low latency HLS, um, and then also uh, SRT, which is another standard, and also um, the different types of WebRTC outs as well. Um, the next thing that we believe is required in supporting a software-defined video platform is the video solution stack. So what is, basically, this is the platform itself, right? It basically means as content is moving back and forth, you may have any different types of con uh, configuration, our platform is able to provide that. That basically means in addition to the any protocol, we're saying we can support any infrastructure, um, we support the processing of it, and essentially we're giving customers the ability to future-proof their entire workflow as things change um, downstream or um, changes within the infrastructure uh, eventually that you're gonna see. Um, for us, this also means that we're able to vacillate different between various public clouds, private clouds. Um, the processing part that I've talked about of live transcoding, Zixi does uh, live transcoding. It's obviously different than file transcoding. We do 4K origination that manages H.265 compression. Um, this basically means that your customers, our customers are really gonna see a noticeable high quality of experience. Um, and in that, we're also preserving the captions and managing HLS dash, dash outputs that we're pushing over to CD or smart TVs that, again, may require web VTT closed captioning for these OTT ready apps. Um, the third thing that we believe is future-proofing us uh, with this um, SDVP software defined video platform is the Zen network. It's a Zixi enabled network. Uh, we've worked very hard um, the first 10 years being too early to market and being a professional POC company and being a software company. We uh, partnered very closely with our hardware providers um, who now um, virtualize those um, components, right? Where I'm talking about the OEM, the encoding stacks, from talking about the decoders and the IRD um, and various systems um, that is all part of this video ecosystem. So 
for us, we did that and we've created this Zixi enabled network um, to allow an ease of connectivity for customers who are launching live live linear channels within that whole supply, uh, supply chain. Um, this Zixi enabled network also creates a speed to deployment, right? Fast time to market. Um, it's providing it into an experience. It's creating agile infrastructure as you're spinning things on the fly that's already Zixi enabled, right? Talked about the protocol part where you're able to bring things in and go out as anything. Um, it's also adapt, providing adaptive architecture as things change, right? So all this, this Zixi enabled network has been a powerful tool for customers as they build this platform out for themselves in terms of managing that entire ecosystem and managing the video supply chain within the ecosystem. The last thing that's very important, and we'll give you a sneak peek, um, Chris will provide a demo of this, is the Zen Master, is, is Zixi Zen Master. Um, Zen Master is a control plane, right? Once you have these, uh, the, these elements, these software elements lit up that, you know, that you're using um, the various protocols, you're using the plot Zixi enabled, um, network, you're, you're leveraging the Zixi enabled network, you're utilizing the video solution stack, the Zixi defined video platform, the Zen master com uh, control plane is a unified SaaS layer that's actually taking the abstraction of the video data that we are harvesting. Um, and that's allowing you to control those configurations that's allowing you to control the IP uh, infrastructure and specifically using utilizing those protocols and the processing again. At the end of the day, this is allowing um, customers uh, to have a single GUI, a single unified SaaS layer to manage and provision and orchestrate and monitor this entire supply chain. And the value add, the turnaround, the impact is really giving time back our, to our operators to have eyes on glass and manage it. And then when something happens, when an error happens, when you need to address root cause analysis, um, you at that point, um, the operators can then at that point invoke a costly engineering resource to kind of address um, the challenges that they're facing, right? So again, it's providing, capturing the telemetry, um, bringing the visibility back into your hands of in the entire video supply chain. This is a really nice kind of a depiction of our, of that Zixi enabled network. It's, an, it's a kind of an ecosystem slide. It a, can be overwhelming, that's the whole point, but you know, again, being 13 years in the market and the market and the, and the industry is finally moving towards us and being able to move content over IP, um, moving video over uh, IP, any IP. Um, again, this is kind of the value add of what Zixi is able to do. And again, the whole thing is we are Zixi is Zixi's platform, our software defined video platform. We're the only platform here that supports as many protocols under a single platform. Um, you can use any IP, you can vacillate through any cloud, and you can target um, any device. And again, this is a, just a visual representation of our uh, global footprint, of that e ecosystem footprint, anywhere to anywhere. Uh, I'll just go through a few marketing slides. We're very, very um, proud of our very demanding customers here. This is just a kind of a snapshot of some of our APJ um, European customers here. Also, our partners, our Zixi enabled ecosystem. I'm, I kind of alluded to being uh, in our first 10 years of being too early to market partnering um, with various OEM and decoders and IRD partners who really, really accelerated the footprint of our Zixi enabled network. And these are our partners who we're super proud of partnering with. Um, and our, this number is probably more around 240, 250 partners and OEMs at this point. Again, another snapshot of our global ecosystem is just kind of a depiction of not only the uh, broadcasters, which you probably saw on that first uh, marketing slide, but this is also a depiction of our service providers, um, of our cloud partners, our OTT partners, um, and you see our uh, uh, Zixi enabled device OEM decoder partners on the bottom here as well. So let's talk about some of the use cases and what's really driving some of the interesting discussions we're seeing in the market, right? Um, the first use case or the value impact of what we see in, in, in the industry is this whole need to push to uh, rationalize satellite, right? Um, there may be use cases where you're trying to move content from APJ out of Singapore, I'm just picking up a spot, and you want to bring that content over to North America today, right? Where, you know, it may not be 
for some tier one content, that's fine. But you, there's some other content where you're still trying to experience where there it may not be a pop-up channel, but it's something that you're you're testing out a channel. Um, it's an OTT digital channel that you want to take to several MVPDs in North America. We're doing this today, and we're doing this by way of long hauling, back hauling with um, Zixi enabled uh, Zixi's uh, software defined video platform using this uh, uh, using Zixi protocol. So these are some examples where we're seeing a lot of um, Zixi over IP being used versus satellite for cost purposes. Um, so that's kind of more of like a tier two, tier three example. At a tier one level, in North America, we have seen a major shift. You know, we talked about some of the requirements around 5G, uh, uh, or uh, we've seen things in the industry where C-band spectrum is being um, freed up for accelerating 5G um, into the market, right? You know, Japan and Korea is way ahead of us, but North America is catching up, and we're seeing this push with FCC rulings against it. And not to mention the types of content and the formats. I mean, you're, we're talking 4K, 8K and we're talking, you know, 80 to 100 meg types of um, bit rate capacity of these content of this of the streams itself, uh, where, you know, satellite might not be the right answer to it. So how do we actually help our customers? And we're seeing this type of migration, especially with some of our large tier one customers. Um, we're really proud of um, our partners here at in North America, NBCU. Again, it's a tier one broadcaster who has fully migrated off of um, satellite, you know, we've taken down five to six transponders and now we have about 2,600, 2,700 streams by way of Zixi and all of this is being managed by way of Zen Master. So we have seen this, this use case used uh, at a small level and then we've seen this used at massive large scale as well. This, this conceit around the second one here is Universal Gateway. Universal Gateway is, you know, I've, I've kind of talked about moving content from, um, you know, from different places from a contribution standpoint where we first started in the industry from point to point, but we're, like I said, we're starting to see this large scale movement of um, co moving content at a global scale. Um, we're constantly seeing this conceit around content exchange, this requirement around um, uh, a, a channel as a service requirement come about. Um, and Zixi is really facilitating a very fast, agile, fast to market, fast time to market, fast time to revenue for customers who are wanting to move um, these channels, this content, these digital content um, to various MVPDs or to various um, OTT providers. And we're actually aggregating this by way of Zixi and moving it to these, you know, just uh, these are examples. Um, Prime Video, Sling, Fubo, Hulu, Hulu um, and also working with service, provis service providers like Comcast Technology Solution CTS um, to get that content to those OTT providers at the end, at the end point. Um, another use case that we keep seeing is remote monitoring and ops. I mean, I think this is a good one to kind of pinpoint as we keep seeing um, this whole thing, this, war, this world of COVID, right? Everybody's shut down. Um, everybody's implementing their break glass strategy and this requirement around being able to remotely monitor and manage and operate um, their, you know, you know, two, it might be 10 feeds, it might be 200 channels or 200 feeds all from a single UI. And so Zen Master has been um, a, a, a solution to help operators seamlessly manage this at home. And the value add here is really the creating the, op, uh, we're creating the efficiencies of being able to pull that information back in a single UI, being able to monitor that entire supply chain under a single control plane. Uh, our, we're, again, some customers here, we're doing this for um, Sling, Fox, NHL, um, some of um, our, our um, news gathering agencies where you're having to make sure you're, you're, you're feeding in multiple, multiple types of feeds and being able to monitor and manage that. Uh, new sources of revenue. This is an interesting one. I mean, it's some of the other ones I've kind of used as examples as cost cutting measures. The new sources of revenue is really helping on the driving the revenue side. And we're, we're always excited to partner with customers who are looking at revenue driving examples. Um, on the drive uh, on new sources of revenue, um, this requirement around having to monetize content, right? So, you know, we had these OTT packages. Now they're 
pushing direct to consumer applications and those direct to consumer applications start with VOD, but then now they're moving towards a live offering, right? Uh, so these are some of the examples that we're seeing that we've helped uh, customers generate the top line growth um, by way of Zixi platform um, with our examples of universal origination, our ability to live transcode, Bloomberg TV uh, plus direct to consumer application, which was launched several months ago. That was all done, um, I think within five, uh, with, with five Zixi engineer or with five of their engineers within four months with um, the Zixi software defined video platform stack. Um, we're very proud to use that as an example where we took a large 4K UHD HEVC um, and was able to do the transcoding, live transcoding output into multiple different formats, a single generation trans, um, a change to, uh, going into the different endpoints. Um, so that's a top drive, a top line driving growth opportunity here. Cloud virtualization, I think, um, um, this is just kind of a no brainer. We're seeing this type of migration happen. So in Zen Master, we are very well integrated. You can actually spin up these instances of an AWS, Azure and Google on the fly. So I'll stop it there because I think we all understand um, the requirement around virtualization and the need um, to migrate towards cloud and create a more seamless um, agile workflow. So these are the five major use cases. Use cases. Uh, by no means is this a complete list. This is just the top five we kind of wanted to capture and share with um, the APJ teams of what we see and how Zix, of how Zixi is being utilized um, within uh, the industry. Um, and something to kind of spin off of that, an extension of those use cases is how Zixi's software-defined video platform is being used as a universal gateway. That was that kind of that second one, but this universal origination, universal aggregation. Uh, what this basically means is we're starting to see more and more major networks and major platforms, major service providers uh, standardizing off of Zixi's SDVP. Um, some examples being Amazon's Media Connect. I think everybody on this call is familiar with Media Connect. Media Connect is built off of the six uh, of our broadcast solution stack. So it's a white label solution where it's sitting on the edge and all any content at, that you want to bring in at broadcast quality into the cloud uh, on AWS cloud, it's done by way of Media Connect with Zixi um, powering that. Similar with NetInsight um, and similar with um, tel our partners at Telstra and some of our OTT partners who are actually standardizing off of our software defined video platform to bring content in in different types of formats and different types of protocols using different all different types of networks and standardizing across Zixi's SDVP. And again, the goal here is really uh, our Zixi's capabilities of being able to help customers manage these entire linear programmatic um, channels, whether it's whether where it's coming from, what type it's where where it's coming from or what type it's coming into as normalizing it and streamlining it and creating operational efficiencies around it. This is a, I think this is our one of our last slides. This is an ecosystem slide and uh, kind of depicting the powers in master here, starting from left to right. It's, depict, it's depicting what an end-to-end -end ecosystem experience would look like. From on the left, you have uh, all the encoding stacks where content is potentially originating out of um, a Tem Vita harmonic. But again, no means is this a full list. It's just an example here. Um, you might even have Zixi um, enabled at various playout facilities or various teleports. Um, so when content's coming out of there, if you want to push it over at the different mediums of IP, whether it's satellite fiber, open open internet or managed MPLS, you can do that. You're vacillating to, between the different network types where some where a Zixi software element will reside. Um, and from there, you're pushing it to a Zixi enabled endpoint or some sort of endpoint um, by way of uh, the various network types. Um, and so again, all this is managed and operate managed and monitored um, and orchestrated by way of Zen Master at the top, the SAS overlay, um, the control the control plane, allowing you to see a full visibility of an end-to-end -end supply chain for your workflow. And again, it's just an ecosystem depiction of what this would look like. We'll take a look at Zen Master and see how this the orchestration takes place. Um, again, just to kind of close out, uh, we are global leaders in moving broadcast quality content over any IP using any protocol vacillating between any cloud and going to any device um, and 
you know, we're very proud of our Emmy that we received, a, a, I believe, I guess a year ago. Um, so any questions that you guys specifically have, um, this is sort of the power of what we're promoting here, Zixi's software defined video platform. I'm now gonna pass this over to uh, my colleague, Chris uh, Fellows, who will be giving you guys a quick uh, sneak peek of our Zen Master. Okay, so let's have a quick look at Zen Master. So Zen Master is a software as a service that Zixi offers to its clients. So every client would have their own URL to access Zen Master. All you need to do is log on to the URL and log on using single sign-on or a username and password, and then you're greeted with this dashboard view. So the dashboard view is a 40-foot high-level overview of the entire Zixi ecosystem. So here I can see a simple uh, traffic light system to show me items that are healthy or unhealthy. I can see any open issues on the right-hand side. So say, for example, this source, um, from Cheddar, I see I've got some CC errors from this source. So I don't need to be a broadcast engineer here to be able to diagnose that problem. I can diagnose it in a couple of seconds and know that there's an issue with that source and what the issue is. If I jump across to grids, so grids is a way that we can group components in Zen Master. So I can group different items and present those in a, in a grids view. And um, so here I've, uh, I've got a group of all the sources that are arriving into my platform. You know, these sources can be made up from any of the 17 protocols and I can view the thumbnail here in, uh, in, the, uh, in the grids view. Any issues and I'd see those errors appear on this, on this grid. So here I've got a grid that includes some errors and I can see all the errors appear in the top left hand corner and I can see the exact reason for those errors. If you can imagine, you know, I could be running this as a, as a penalty box view in an MCR and just have sources or, or components appear when they, uh, when they go into error. Okay, so moving on, we've got feeders, broadcasters, receivers. So these are the software components in the in the platform. So feeders would sit at the source origin site. So if, for example, you were you were doing live uh, live sports games, um, you would have a feeder at each of the stadiums or the OB locations, and then I can have their health status report back from each of those locations on that software. I also have a really handy open button which will use reverse SSH to access the feeder directly which means that I don't need to open TeamView or open TCP ports to be able to access that software. The other item with, with broadcasters in Zen Master is we use clusters within Zen Master. So it means that I can have as many broadcasters in a single cluster as I wish. So here I have a, a broadcast cluster with three broadcasters in, and this is for load balancing and redundancy. So it's gonna spread those streams across those three broadcasters. If I wanted to add a new broadcaster, we can actually link in with AWS, uh, Google GCP, Microsoft Azure accounts, and I can just spin up new broadcasters via a press of a button. So this means if you wanted to host an extra, you know, 100, 200 streams over a weekend and you didn't want to purchase all the CapEx um, expenditure for the extra hardware, you could just use uh, Zen Master in, in, entwined with your, your cloud provider and then you could, you could host those extra streams over the weekend. And then when you finished, you could just come into Zen Master and, and close that instance down and then you, you're not paying any of the bills there. Okay, so receivers are similar to feeders. Basically, they sit at the endpoint and, and can take streams from a Zixi broadcaster. And again, I get all the health status for those different components. So then we move on to sources, channels, and targets. So these are the sort of logical layer within Zen Master, if you like. So if I wanted to add a new source, so a source is anything that comes into the Zixi platform, all I need to do is select to add here, and then I have the options of which what type of source I want to add. So, you know, you see all the Zixi, Media Connect, so we can take sources direct from Media Connect. We could take sources already on a Zixi platform. Uh, Hitless sources, so I could do a, a two by one switch on different sources that come from the same encoder. And we can deal with any latency uh, differences. You know, you could be taking the mainstream over fiber and the backup over public internet. And then we could take those streams and we could do a, a you know, a, a, a Hitless seamless switch on those two sources. Transcoding, PID mapping, so the broadcaster includes those features. Um, you know, UDP, SRT, RIST, NDI. It's just simple, you just click add and then you can create one of those new sources. Once I have a source in Zen Master, I can select that source. I get a lot more detail around the source. I'll see the same thumbnails that I saw in the grids view. I can select the play button and play um, the high res on VLC using a special Zixi plugin that we have for VLC. We do content analysis on all the sources coming into the platform. So here we do TR101, priority one and priority two, as well as looking inside the IP stream at the video itself. And we can flag on frozen video, blank picture and audio issues as well. So within Zen Master, we, we keep sort of like a database of all these, these details. So I could jump back at different time ranges and look at um, 
you know, the quality of the stream or the analytics on the stream. So here I see on this stream over the past 24 hours, we've had quite a few different um, CC errors and I can see the exact timing for those. We also track um, Scotty 35 markers so I can see the splice insert commands and the time that those commands were, were received. <clears throat> we track the network um, details as well so I can see any drop packets, any non recover packets. I can see jitter and RTT on the line. We're also tracking many other details. So like, um, you know, the bit rates, frame delivery, the percentage of frames delivered into the broadcaster, uh, encoding quality using our own estimated PSNR score, and packet timing, and also a trace route there as well. With the Scotty 35 markers, we can actually um, pull those out of the stream as well and give more details around those. So with this details button, I can see the exact Scotty 35 XML that was sent, and I can, uh, you know, we can diagnose any upstream problems that may have occurred. Okay, so sources, um, channels are, are how the, the streams go across the broadcaster. So, so for example, if I take this, uh, this channel here, and I look at the diagram, I can see what we've done here is we've taken one mezzanine feed into a broadcaster. We're then transcoding that stream into four different bit rates using the Zixi transcoder and then delivering that out as HLS to a media store. And we can get a whole overview and we can, uh, we can use these diagrams to see exactly where the sources are being sent and how they're being used. So finally, targets. So targets are an endpoint to the, uh, the Zixi platform, so an output. So I can see all the different targets that I've got in my system. Again, if I wanted to add a new output, I could just select add and then select the output type. So we've got a few different options here. HTTP means that we can, you know, we can write to a HTTP server or AWS storage bucket, that could be media store or S3 bucket. Uh, and that could be HLS or MPEG dash. Um, we could send Zixi out, RIS, UDP, RTMP for social media platforms, uh, SRT, NDI. <clears throat> so to create then is just simply adding, uh, adding a new output. And then, you know, when, I, uh, when I've added the output and have it in my list here, I could select that output and see details around that output as well. So I can see, you know, the same network traffic that we saw on the source, uh, packet delivery and a trace route as well. And there's, a, there's different criteria for different types of outputs, which we can, uh, I can go into if you, if, you, if you request. Okay, so moving on, we've got logs, um, reports. So reports can show stats, uptime and usage for all of the different components, which could be useful for proven SLAs. We also have a remote access section, which means that I can remotely access via SSH connection, third party kits. So say for example, I have this Elemental Live device, I could select open, use reverse SSH and go directly into the Elemental Live. So what this means is not only is ZenMaster giving you a platform to, to create and orchestrate your whole platform and your system and your workflows, you can also monitor those. And if anything was to go wrong, you can go into third party equipment and correct any of those streams. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick 10 minute overview. Um, if you'd like some more detail, please uh, contact us at Zixi. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for that, Chris. Um, and thank you to our audience who have uh, sat, who sat through our, our Zixi overview. Um, I hope it was informative and helpful. We'd love to hear from you. We welcome the opportunity to sit down with you guys and get to know your use cases a bit better and uh, understand some of the challenges that you guys are facing and how we can assist and help.